Welcome back to Catholic Drive Time. This is your host, Adrian Fonseca. It's so good to be on with you today. Praise be to God. A wonderful day to stand up for our Lord and our Lady. A beautiful day. You know why? Because we are in the Easter season. And during the Easter season, it is a even better time, a specially great time to be uh, hanging out with our Lord and our Lady in a, in a holy hour. Spend some time in front of our Lord. Spend some time praying because it's the best thing to do. What else are people say? Wait, oh, yeah, I got something better to do. What do you, what do you got better to do? What, what's, what do you have going on in your life that you can't dedicate one hour a week to spend with our Lord, the God of the universe? Do you have an appointment with the God of the universe? Are you going to be late? That's the question. And joining us right now via Zoom is Alan Smith with Bishop Sheen today. Uh, good morning to you, Alan. Uh, good morning, Adrian. It's great to be here on the network once again to talk about one of my favorite subjects, that is prayer. And uh, who better to teach us about prayer than the Venerable Archbishop Fulton J. Sheen? Absolutely, absolutely. And uh, it's very good because uh, didn't you, you have a book that uh, Fulton Sheen, a collection of Fulton Sheen's works on adoration. Uh, let's start there. Uh, tell me about that. Right. Uh, the Holy Hour Prayer Book is... Um, uh, a book that I republished uh, uh, two years ago uh, because of the great uh, Eucharistic revival. We see many dioceses um, promoting the Holy Hour once again. And um, uh, the good folks in Peoria, Illinois, were kind enough to lend me a picture of uh, the monstrance um, uh, with our Lord on the altar in Peoria. And I used that as a cover for the book. And it's simply the Holy Hour Prayer Book. And it was a book that Fulton Sheen made available to his listening audience. Um, if you tuned into the Catholic Hour program uh, that was heard every week, and there was about three to five million listeners that tuned in, uh, he would invite them to write to, to the station to request a Holy Hour Prayer Booklet because uh, he was asking everyone to do their part. Of course, it was the war years, and America was over fighting uh, in Europe, but also against uh, Japan. And so these great wars were on, and uh, he knew we had to hold everybody up in prayer. And so he says, I'm going to give you a little prayer book to help you uh, make that holy hour. And uh, he pleaded with everyone each week to carve out that time in your busy schedule to pray. And uh, that continues today. Um, we're still at war. Uh, there's spiritual battles going on. Um, your last guest was uh, <laughs> really making it clear to us that uh, we are fighting against principalities and powers. And so uh, what better way than to make that holy hour? And so, uh, again, Fulton Sheen um, does it best, I think. He was instrumental in bringing about this revival of the holy hour, especially in society today. You know, it's very interesting to me because this kind of idea of sitting alone in a room is very scary to people. As our modern person is not able to sit alone for any length of time without having their phone out, without having something to occupy them. They are, we are afraid of boredom. And so most people, when they hear holy hour, they think you're sitting alone in a room. Well, of course, you're not actually sitting alone in a room. You're in front of the God of the universe, but they don't know what to do. They sit here and they say, okay, I'm stuck in this room for an hour. What do I do? And so, Alan, what would you recommend? What, what kind of ways are there to pray in a holy hour? Right. So, again, I want to distinguish, um, again, the holy hours that people sometimes think what it is. Now, there's many people that will go into a church and there could be a chapel that's reserved uh, for holy hours. And so uh, they're called adoration chapels. And we see those spotted all over the country. Um, and so people will come to visit uh, the chapel uh, and spend one hour there. Uh, other people will make the holy hour in their own uh, house. Um, you know, they can't get to the church, so they have to somehow set some time apart. Uh, but for those who go into a chapel setting or a church setting, uh, Fulton Sheen recommends that uh, you bring a good book with you, uh, but especially the scriptures. And uh, in the Holy Hour prayer book, he gives some 
uh, good coaching uh, tips of what to do. Um, it takes sometimes the first 15 minutes to shake off the noonday devils to kind of clear your mind. Uh, and then, of course, he would invite people to just open the scriptures to a, um, a passage that maybe uh, resonates with them and then just close uh, the scriptures and then just ponder that uh, great uh, passage that they read. Uh, a lot of times what Fulton Sheen says that we sometimes get caught up in doing all the talking. Uh, we say to the Lord, I got this, I need that, this problem, this, this area, I need attention. But do we listen to him? And so he really encourages the visitor to just sit and listen listen to the Lord. And that's uh, what happens. He relates sometimes the beautiful scripture of the uh, passage of the road to Emmaus, how um, the apostles met our Lord along the road and didn't really recognize him. Uh, but as he started to unpackage the scriptures with them, uh, and then when he broke bread, and um, then of course their eyes were opened and they realized it was the Lord. And then they said, were not our hearts burning within us? And some people, when they make the holy hour, feel the same way, that when the hour is coming to an end, they don't want to leave. And they realize they were with the Lord and had that beautiful encounter. So um, it takes a while to get to that point, uh, but practice makes perfect. And, um, you know, Fulton Sheen was trying to say you need this holy habit in your life. So try to carve out an hour if you can. And if it just means 15 minute visits, then do that. Uh, the beautiful tradition that many of us had where we would just stop for a minute or two at the church, tip our hat or peek our head in the door and say hello to the Lord. Do we recognize that the Lord is with us, that he's present in every tabernacle uh, throughout the world? So um, a gentle reminder to say we need relationship with God. You know, it's interesting because I, I think that like you, I think you said that very well. There is a situation, and I kind of feel this way when I go on retreats as well, that our hearts are so restless. Our lives are so busy. And it's, it's almost an American joke at this point where people will say, oh, how are you doing? And you respond, oh, good, I'm busy. And you say, oh, it's good because you're busy? And, and there's this idea that we don't have any concept of leisure, no concept of slowing down. And I've heard the analogy used of a, of a ceiling fan. When you turn a ceiling fan off, the ceiling fan still keeps going and going and going. And slowly it starts to slow down. And after a while, it crawls to a stop. And then there is silence. And that is a great analogy of our soul. We go into a holy hour and the first 15 minutes, 30 minutes, 45 minutes even, our hearts are restless. They're spinning. Our minds are spinning. We're thinking about what are we going to get to eat afterwards? It's like, oh, I'm late for a meeting. We're thinking, oh, I got this going on tomorrow. Oh, I got this problem going on. It takes us a while to lay them all down at the foot of the cross and recognize, let me just be still in the Lord. Let me meditate upon the good things of God. What do you think, Alan, about the uh, this kind of restlessness we have in our culture, unable to sit still? Well, we don't want to, um, you know, look into our souls. I think Fulton Sheen made this clear in many of his writings. He says, we're afraid to be quiet because we may then all of a sudden have to look inside. We don't want to deal with our sin. We don't want to really amend our life. Yes, we want to get to heaven, and we sometimes think, oh, the Lord will have mercy, and he'll take me in. But really, he's saying, no, I, I want you to work on rooting out your sinfulness, uh, listening to me, because if you listen to the scriptures, uh, the antidote for sin is in the scriptures. Uh, but we don't like silence because we might have a conversation with ourselves, <laughs> and sometimes that can be scary. We love to make commentaries about everybody else, but not really look inside. And I think this is what Fulton Sheen was saying is, if you just spend a little bit of time in silence every day, you'll start to work on you. Uh, and uh, the better you are, the better the world will be. 
And the better the world will be, the more happiness there will be. But again, it's a scary thing to look into your own soul. But uh, again, it takes a great courage to do that. Uh, but again, Fulton Sheen would say to his audience every week, start with 15 minutes. Just try to be still for 15 minutes. Uh, even if it's just five minutes, try to be five minutes in silence just being present. Um, and that's where Our Lady can really be of great help. Uh, I know when I'm troubled and disturbed, uh, I invite her to sit with me, uh, to be in her presence, almost like a child sitting on her lap, uh, but to let her be that calming influence that you need to uh, take off and shake off those noonday devils uh, that seem to attach themselves to us all the time. But uh, again, start with five minutes, It'll work into 10 and then maybe 15. Uh, and then all of a sudden you'll be looking forward to your holy hour every day. Amen. Amen. You know, it's it's interesting that uh, <laughs> you mentioned uh, our, our lady's relationship here because I was looking at this this book called Eucharistic Gems by Father Calloway. It's a daily wisdom on the Blessed Sacrament. Uh, Mr. Tim Mott here in Houston uh, gave it to me. And I was reading this and it says, devotion to the Blessed Sacrament and devotion to the Blessed Virgin are not simply the best way, but in fact are the only way to conserve purity. At the age of 20, nothing but communion can keep one's heart pure. That's St. Philip Neri, uh, quoting St. Philip Neri. And I think this was true during St. Philip Neri's time. How much more true in the 21st century where we're <laughs> inundated constantly with pornographic images. Even if you never look at pornography, just looking at what regular TV, just watching YouTube videos, just looking at billboards, you're inundated with this idea. How much more today? And it's interesting because I was also reading the quote from today, because this is the quote from May 13th, May 11th. Today, he says here from St. John Vianney, when we cannot come to church, let us turn towards a tabernacle and make a spiritual communion. A wall cannot separate us from God. And I think you combine those two quotes into one idea here and they say, and it basically says, make a holy hour. And if you can't get to a church, make a holy hour anyway, turn toward our Lord and Holy Communion and have that kind of spiritual communion. Uh, Mr. Alan Smith with Bishop Sheen today, uh, last thoughts on uh, this and uh, tell us about how we can get a hold of that book. Oh, yes. So you can get a hold of the book uh, through Amazon. You just Google uh, the Holy Hour Prayer Book by Fulton Sheen. Uh, you'll see the beautiful picture of the altar at uh, St. Mary's in Peoria. Uh, so again, that uh, bookstore called Amazon, it's available all over the world. Uh, but still, my final thoughts is, again, um, Fulton Sheen, of course, practiced what he preached. Uh, he made the Holy Hour every day for 62 consecutive years. So uh, again, he can be an inspiration to us. We have to start somewhere. But again, it's that idea of if you can't get to church, then Oh, can your house, your apartment becomes your church and you need to carve out that time there. But schedule the Lord in. It sounds silly. Uh, we have busy schedules. I know I have a full day scheduled already, but I've scheduled some time with the Lord. And it may sound silly that he gets your appointment from 1230 to 1, but you've got to schedule that time. Make a plan. As they say, what do they say? I uh, fail to plan, plan to fail. Mm. Well, you need to schedule the Lord in. So start with small increments, but write it down and schedule that time with the Lord and start that way. You know, that's interesting. I love you said that. Yeah, schedule it in, put it in your planner, put it in your calendar. And when people ask, oh, what are you doing at this time? Be like, oh, sorry, I, I got an appointment with my boss. I'll be, I gotta, I'll be back later. And uh, there's no lie there. There's no lie there. You got, you got an appointment with the big man. So uh, go get to go set that in your schedule and say, hey, sorry, got, I can't meet. Sorry. I, uh, the boss is calling. I'll be back in an hour. Uh, it'd be a great thing to do. So uh, thank you very much. Alan Smith with Bishop Sheen today. And uh, we are in the after show, you're going to want to join us because we're going to have Mr. Cesar Franco. And I'm sure Alan will hop back on with us. We'll have a great conversation about holy hours and, and the relationship between this and the revolution, counter-revolution. It'll be a great conversation. I'm excited. So we're going into our game show, Fear and Trembling. So make sure you call in 877-757-9424, 877-757-9424. Call now. We take the first caller every time, 877-757-9424. It was somewhat of an accident, and I have a lot of windshield time driving 
for work and usually I'm listening to my gospel music and so I wanted to find something else different and so I started scrolling I found Guadalupe Radio I started listening to it on a regular basis and what I realized had I found this station years ago my conversion would have probably happened years ago the Guadalupe Radio Network radio for your soul Hello, this is Steve Gleason with your one-minute tool for Catholic evangelism. Here's the question for your non-Catholic friend. According to the American court system, can a jury of 12 citizens who are of varying moral beliefs, backgrounds, and persuasions objectively deem a person not guilty who actually committed the crime? Well, here's your three best friendship tools for Catholic evangelism. Number one, church law. In the same manner, the Apostolic College, who are the unique inheritors of the Catholic Church authority, were also granted that same power. Secondly, certain limitations. The court of 12, called a jury, can only grant acquittal or guilt. The Apostolic Apostolic College, proceeding from the Twelve Apostles, can declare a third position, that being innocence, different from acquittal. And thirdly, a tough comeback. The jury of twelve wields frightening power that changes lives. The church also wields magnificent power that changes guilt into forgiveness and pardon. Is your Bible church obedient to James chapter 5, which says, Call for the elders of the church, and if he has committed sins, he will be forgiven. So if you ask your pastor to provide weekly opportunities to confess sins, will he? Donnie, what two important things do we receive when we go to Mass? Scripture and the Eucharist. Great job. You're so smart. As parents, we're the primary educators of our Catholic faith to our children. And if you don't know your Catholic faith as well as you should, that's okay. Just tune in daily to the Guadalupe Radio Network by logging online to grnonline.com. The Guadalupe Radio Network. Listen, learn, love, and pass it on. Welcome to another round of fear and trembling. <laughs> the Catholic trivia game show that helps you work out your salvation by the seat of your pants. It's a 50-50 chance and prizes are involved. Avoid the weeping and gnashing of teeth. Call now 